everyone, my name is Karina. I go by Cartsy on social media, and in today's video, we are putting on the face of a Kyoshi warrior. You may remember me briefly mentioning possible inspirations for the Kyoshi Warrior makeup in the Hakama video. And I mentioned things such as Mako, Geisha, Kabuki, and Chinese Opera. All of these are possible inspirations for the makeup of the Kyoshi Warriors, but recently I had a discovery in my research. So I stumbled upon the old official website of Avatar The Last Airbender from Nickelodeon from in the late 2000s. Now this has been purely saved because the original site is down and you can't get to it. This has been saved on Tumblr by an account called The Lost Lore of Avatar The Last Airbender. So on this account, there is an old image from the site that says, The warrior's traditional outfits are inspired by Kabuki theater, and their painted faces are designed to intimidate their opponents. Now Kabuki is the only inspiration for the Kyoshi Warriors that I have been able to find that comes directly from the franchise. And it makes complete sense. For those of you who don't know, Kabuki is a theatrical performance in Japan and it stretches all the way back into their history and has evolved over time. The makeup is drawn on by the actors themselves, featuring bold colors and thick lines, and all of these are meant to accentuate muscles and veins in the face to best show the facial expressions from, from afar to the audience. The color determines what stock character the performer is. Red is for heroes, blue is for villains, and brown is for supernatural creatures like demons. So Kabuki was started in Kyoto, Japan in around 1600 by a woman called Izumo Okuni. And I'll have her name right here. She was a dancer at the Izumo Shrine, and this is during the time when Japan starts to practice isolationism under the Tokugawa Shogunate. Now during this time, there is really only one main theater, and that is No, and it's mainly available for the upper class. So there is a new growing middle class in this time period, and they were in need of a theater. So this is why Kabuki became very popular, because it appealed to the middle class. So Kabuki became more and more complex with plays added into it, more specific dancing, and even costumes. Soon other groups started emerging and practicing Kabuki as well. These groups were all women quarters and groups who were called Ona Kabuki, and I apologize for my pronunciations. So in 1629, women became banned from performing Kabuki, and instead it was an all men performance. And that tradition continues to this day. The origins of Kabuki is very similar to how the Kyoshi warriors came to be. In fandom lore, Avatar Kyoshi would meet women and teach them how to defend themselves. These women eventually became the Kyoshi warriors that we know today. According to that old Nickelodeon site from the late 2000s, Kyoshi's island citizens live scattered amongst several small villages around the island. Each village has a leader and a band of female Kyoshi warriors, both of whom serve and protect their citizens. As you can see, this draws parallelism with how women only perform kabuki at a certain time. Kabuki being the inspiration for the Kyoshi Warriors also makes sense because if you look back in the episodes, specifically Book 1, Episode 4, you can hear them being compared to a dance. Sorry ladies, didn't mean to interrupt your dance lesson. Out of the way, let's talk about where the makeup for the Kyoshi Warriors originates. After Kyoshi's parents were Daofei, outlaws in the Avatar universe. They had a group called the Flying Opera Company and performed as a theater troupe, but were thieves. For a series of events, Avatar Kyoshi inherits her mother's makeup, which results in what we know today to be the Kyoshi Warrior makeup. And just like in Kabuki, every color of the Kyoshi Warrior makeup has a meaning. On page 342, the Flying Opera Company says, White symbolizes treachery, a sinister nature, suspicion of others, and the willingness to visit evil deeds upon them. But red symbolizes honor, loyalty, heroism. This is the face we show our sworn brothers and sisters. The red is the trust we have for each other, buried in the field of white, but always showing through our gaze. The mention of red symbolizing heroism is exactly the same thing in Kabuki, because remember, red symbolizes heroes, blue villains, and brown supernatural creatures. Now that we know its origins in both inspiration and fandom lore, I want to make it clear that what I am doing today is not how you apply kabuki makeup. 
I do not have the specific makeups for those traditional looks, nor am I trained in their application. The hair and makeup done in this video has understanding of real life, but is fantasy just like the show. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now one of the tricky things about bringing the Kyushu Warrior makeup to life is that I have to translate a cartoon face to actual facial proportions. So to do this, I went into Photoshop and I've played around with my own face and the character's face to figure out where I was gonna draw the lines on my face. I also used this as a great opportunity to start figuring out how everything would look like together and to map out the hair. All of the background characters of the Kyoshi Warriors in seasons two and three have very interesting and unique hairstyles. So I wanted to mimic those hairstyles in particular. There are certain head ornaments that are also included in the look of a Kyoshi Warrior. For this video, I will not be venturing into those and I'll save them for a later video. So at the end of my Photoshop mini adventure, I gained a better understanding of exactly what I was doing and more confidence that this was gonna look good in the end. So welcome to my bathroom. Now we're gonna get started with the makeup. I have never done makeup before. Like I've done like eyeliner and pop some lip gloss on my face, but that is the extent of my knowledge. So I've had to do a lot of research to figure out how to do this, and it's gonna take a lot of practice, so let's get on to it. This is take one of the hair. <laughs> so what exactly are you doing? I'm inventing stuff right You're now. inventing? Okay. That's cool. Do you have any bobby pins? Can you hold it and yeah. you make it? I kind of feel like, like someone from Star Wars. Oh, you're adding more volume. Okay. I think it can be so much better. Oh, this is take one. So like, from what I can see from the mirror right over there, it's actually looking pretty cool. I can put something in here to hold it like mm -hmm. this. But I can put this higher. I think that's yeah, why it should, I go, should higher. go higher. Because they have like little like silk yes. pieces and, 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 yes. and yes. things that go up here. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, we just threw something together to figure out like, what are we doing with the hair? So this is like option one of what we're trying. I did it, but I did it like yesterday. If you want, with your Well, <laughs> that's why it's still there. Should you like put the comb right here to pull up so that it like foam forms something? Yep. I have very I have very limited knowledge about hair, but like the little I do know. We're getting something. I'm just happy I have a lot of hair to work with. I can tease this to go higher. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, something's I mean, happening. I just need to tease more. But at least well, you can tease it off, like, actually. Tease it, like, yeah. You know, like. But this is actually like an interesting shape. Yeah. It has some. Um, we get some volume going on. Yeah. I need to do better. With that. But I think my my main thing is to put another one of these in here. So. Yeah, you're gonna grab one. Yeah. What do we call? What do we call those things? Bunch. 
Uh, is it sponge? So to achieve the dramatic shape, we're using hair donuts that we cut in half. And this goes inside the hair to provide a volume. So what are we doing? So we're gonna do the lining here to put the hair um, down. And then we're gonna pick all the hair here and split it in two to give you the volume in the top and the volume in the back. We did blow dry your hair to be straight so it's easier to move. And with that, we had figured out what the hair was gonna look like. But the makeup was a different story. It took multiple attempts of doing the makeup to figure out exactly how to apply it onto my face. So far, the brush makes it very streaky in the face, while the sponge kind of evens it out better. So what you were, th what you were thinking. To do the brush first to get volume, dry it, and then go in over it with this sponge. Okay. But no matter how much white I put in your eyebrows, they don't go white. Oh my gosh, no, my eyebrows are gonna stay like... Every time you put the makeup on me, I'm half expecting like a Milan moment. Mm -hmm. You know that scene where they cut through the brush and her love going... <laughs> I know, right? Now we're putting in the powder. And then also the powder does make a strange effect. So we're thinking we're gonna go without the powder next time and see if we can make it smoother. For the Kyoshi Warrior cosplay makeup, I decided to go with the brand Mayoron. And this is because this was the most accessible product that was available to me on the market where I live. I did look at traditional makeup used for kabuki and geisha, but the international shipping cost would have been a nightmare. So I chose three colors of the Paradise Maron set, and that is black, red, and white. And then additionally, I picked up this clown white light, and all these paints are activated with water. We're using a combination of the Paradise Maron, and the clown white, using the paradise as our base and adding on top the clown white. And for my eyes, we'll be using some black eyeliner.
And this is the final look for the Kirshi Warrior face. I could not be happier with how it turned out. I was very, very nervous that it was not going to work at all because the white paint at first didn't want to layer correctly. But the more we experimented, the more we figured it out, and I am so glad with the end result. <laughs> okay, so this just happened. So I want to give a special thanks to my mom, and I'm trying not to touch her because I don't want to get white, white makeup on your face. <laughs> You see her arm outstretched just because she's holding up the ring light so that she's also balanced in the room. And then you can see her lovely face. <laughs> I want to kiss you but like my, my makeup. <laughs> but yeah, by no means are we professional makeup people. I myself have like squat makeup experience or hair experience and she's the one who's been doing it for me for like my whole life. She is the... We're not experts, but in this household, she's the expert. <laughs> she's the behind the scenes person who helps me with my hair and my makeup because I know nothing about this stuff. If I were to do it myself, it would look like trash, like utter trash. And I'm not even joking, I am, it's just not my world. And she has way more experience with it, with it than me. And with everything going on that I do, I have school, I have work, and then just, so many things that, that goes on like this type of skill has been really difficult for me to learn on my own so having oh hi Paco <laughs> dog but ha so having my mom who's able to help me out with these things and just yeah I love her thank you so yeah so thank you for watching today's episode of the Kiyoshi Warrior Cosplay series make sure to like comment and subscribe and my mom keeps putting the ring light on the camera but like Oops. yeah <laughs> So yeah, bye! <laughs> when will my reflection show who I am? Yeah, this is not who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, I can't sing to save my life. When will my reflection? Are you recording? Yeah, I'm recording. I don't know why. I'm being a. I'm See? being. A, yeah, I'm being goofball right now.